some more work of Mary's, the lovely Ellie Golding, who's graced the glamour front cover a few times now. And this is a really dramatic look, which I absolutely love, with a really lovely pale lip. Now I know Ellie personally, and she can be quite specific as to how she likes to be made up and what she thinks suits her. How is she with this whole process, and was it an enjoyable shoot? It was, I mean, at first of all, I love working with Diana, they're always, always adorable. Yeah. And every photographer they choose is probably a friend, and I just love it. And I love Natalie, and I love the teams. Um, Yes, she was amazing. I mean, I think she wanted to have a, diff a very different look. She wanted that, but that very strong eye. She's used to having quite a soft eye. She's used to projecting her as quite a soft person. So she was very happy to go very hard and dramatic and extremely smoky. And, um, you know, the styling worked with it. Obviously, the ch styling was chosen to, to work with the makeup and the hair, or vice versa. We were actually directed by the, the clothing as well. If they're going to a premiere or they're doing a, a big campaign, but say a premiere, it's more of a personal choice, would Kira say, Mary, I'm going to wear this, I would like this, or would you tell her what she's having? No, with a premiere, we always have a look at the dress before we start. So it's like, okay, that's the dress, that's the look, that's the sh the, here are the shoes, here is the jewellery, and you work around that, you know. And um, some people like a lot of makeup, some people like very little makeup. That's about three years old, that picture. And, you know, there was a time, so for example, looking at now on it with a critical eye of a makeup, what's happened with makeup now, I would say, for me, in modern makeup terms, because makeup changes all the time, okay, is that she has, it's three years ago, so it's acceptable, she has a little bit too much blush on, okay? So, I've never noticed that. Is that just because you're super critical of your own work? No, it's because that's with, with, if it, with, with whoever work was down there, I would say the same thing. Okay? Because right now, blush is probably the one product that isn't that in vogue, to use vogue in the proper sense of the word. Um, it's sort of, it's with, everyone's come back and taken more of a back seat. It's more about just looking kind of not sculpting is out, thank God, let's get rid of it, except for Mario, who does those, I'm sure you all know Mario is, who does Kardashians, who is unbelievable, I mean, what a genius, you know, and he does, as you know, talks all over the world, he's incredibly good. Um, but he, you know, he's master sculpting, and everyone's really copying him, yeah. to be honest. So, um, you know, that, she, here is really in sculpting because her face is so incredibly structured, and she's so beautiful, but honestly, this is just my opinion. I'm looking at it now and thinking Kira, the most, one of the most beautiful women in the world without a doubt. Um, you know, for me, critically, has a little bit too much blush on. I could not tell you all that, and you, might not, even, and you might not even think that, or even realise that, as you said. Yeah. Um, but it's just an opinion I have of a picture that's three years old. And what makeup trends do you detest? What would you never do if it was, you know, an in vogue or not? Um, there's nothing I detest. No? No, everything's fine. I mean, um, everything's absolutely acceptable. You know, I think, you know, the talent that someone like Pat has for transforming faces in a really kind of artistic way, that's never been my style. My style's always been about beauty, literally, quote, beauty. Um, and I think that's what I've been known to do now. That's what I do. So, um, whatever, you know, like, Whatever suits, like whether it be liner, or whether it be lashes, or just smoky eye, or whatever, I'm fine with everything, you know. What I'm sure a lot of the ladies in the room would like to know, is we have spotted a few chaps as well, but with the ladies in the room, all of us simply want to know when we're doing our own makeup at home, you know, away from sort of having, you know, the exceptional portfolio and talent and years that you've built up, but just as people that like to do their own makeup at home, I've done my own makeup this morning, what helps to make you look more beautiful? Are there certain things that you need to do to open an eye, plump the lips, whatever? What, do, do, is there one rule for all faces? This is, you know, I hate to say it, but there isn't. Right. Because what it is, it's all about good skin. And that's what I really, your skin is looking amazing. Whatever, whatever your skincare regime is, stick to it. Mine is two hours sleep, two children, <laughs> and loads of coffee. <laughs> Exceptionally, naturally gifted and beautiful. I mean, you know, there's some people obviously who have, you know, who are blessed with, you know, beautiful skin, which you obviously are. But I think the most important about any picture of gorgeousness is the skin. In in beauty, not in fashion. You can get away with a lot more in fashion, but in beauty. Okay. Um, so for anybody, everybody, for all of you out there, if you want to make the picture look absolutely fantastic, make sure the skin is looking. Fantastic. Yeah. So it's the right foundations, 
it's the right primers, it's the right serums, it's all of that underneath your bandage. And, and it's like a bandage. trial and error personally for all of us here. We just have to sort of experiment and get to the point where we go, oh, that worked for me that day. Yeah, yeah. kind of. Um, it really is about trial and error. And also, you know, layering is a great thing. You know, there's also another thing that I'm very, 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 very blessed. Okay. Now, for many reasons. But one of the reasons why I'm blessed is I have all these products to try all the time. Okay? So I'm sent the best of the best to try. Um, it's to a huge advantage. But I do think, I mean, having said that, you know, the brands such as L'Oreal, you know, they have, they make wonderful products now. You can go to Space NK and find whatever you want, you know, you really can. Um, because she was, you know, she was the most amazing, beautiful woman. I was just so blessed, blessed to be part of her life at one point. Yeah. You know. well, I, I remember she called my house one day and a friend was staying with me and I wasn't there. And she said, hello? And I thought, hi, she was like, isn't there there? No, no, she said, no, she said, oh, could you just But that was um, all that picture know. is just so gorgeous yeah, as well. It's great. Such a wonderful face to work on, I'm sure. She was extraordinary. She was so nice. And then it was the first time I really realised the power of one person. I was sitting yeah. around her table in Kensington Palace having lunch one day. That's one does. <laughs> and, um, and there was you know, a whole bunch of journalists and very important people, all men except for me and her. And um, it was, you know, it was meant to be informal lunch, but of course those situations were never informal, really. And every time she opened them up, the whole table went silent. Mm. So, you know, then the chat would start again, and then, you know, she continued talking, the person was talking, then they'd break in the conversation, as it always is in dinner parties and dinner lunches. And then she would end up there and turn to her. It was almost like she led the entire thing in this beautiful dance. She's such a special lady. Yeah, it's a beautiful yeah. picture. I think a lot of people who want to call him that Kardashian bracket will copy him. Mm -hmm. So what do I think of that? I think it's amazing. Good for them. Go for it. But, you know, I also think what is so interesting, you can know, look at the fashion shows that come out of Paris, Milan, and whatever, and see, you know, really pared down makeup. Mm -hmm. So if you have, you know, if you're that kind of person, you want to project that kind of, you know, contoured, strong brow look, Go for it. I have absolutely no problem with people doing exactly what they want, projecting exactly what they want. Mm. But I also love people who want to really pare down, looking fresh and lovely, like mm. a lot of the shows. It has sort of changed makeup artistry. Um, okay, so when Photoshop start, first started to happen, um, I think I think a lot of makeup artists who are working who are working quite high up. Um, it, it, it doesn't happen any longer. We came a little bit lazy because they are be photoshopped. And I literally mean that I've heard it, people say it. You know, and I've heard photographers say it to me even when I say, I'm not so sure about that lip colour, I don't mind photoshopped. Yeah. And so it made people actually not be quite so specific. My training was being was pure, there was no photoshopping, it was very little bit, especially Patrick Mans de Marchelli and Paolo Versi, no retouching. Paolo could have also dreaming in Patrick hardly ever did any retouching at all. So what I brought up was brought up to be very precise. I don't know, but then I think maybe because of Instagram, people have become very precise again. So I think it went to a stage of people being quite lazy, and now it's because of the Kardashian effect, really precise to get, you know, you can't have brows that are uneven if you want to have a very strong brow look. You, you follow your own natural brow shape always, but you've got to be, they've got to be, you know, they're sisters, not twins, right? That famous saying, brows. <laughs> Um, but they've got to be as even as possible, for example. So thank you, Mario, actually. You sort of brought back that perfection. I've got a question about, um, I guess, that time when you said there was these makeup legends and you were one of them. Um, was there a style that kind of defined you all? So obviously you were kind of competing for the same jobs, I guess. Do you think there was a style that you were all famous for at that moment? I think what happened is in the 80s, first of all, it was a very small institution that time. So we weren't competing against each other, we were all friends. You know, Stefan Marie and I used to share products in the studio in, in Paris when he was working with Peter Lindbergh and I was working with Paolo Rossi. We, was, we weren't competing. So it was such a small industry and I think that what happened in the 80s, the other thing happened, until the, 
until the end of the 70s, it was a look for every era. You think back to when makeup became fashionable, like, you know, the 20s, 30s, I'm not going to name what the looks are, you can figure this out for yourself, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, it suddenly became free. Because every look by that time had been done. By the end of the 70s, every colour had been used, every bit of glitter, every form of look had been done. So when the 80s came along, it was suddenly about beauty again. And so we all became, became of a beauty era, if you like. And I don't think we had to determine a look. I think by that time working with the faces, more than slap, slap, slapping our look onto the face, which would have happened in all the other times in makeup. So I think what we're all doing is sharing products, having the best time, running around the world, and making them look beautiful. <laughs>